Hello GED students, it is GED question of the daytime and we've got a tricky little problem here. Um, it says which expression below represents the distance between points A and C, oh it's supposed to say A and C, typo, okay, the distance between points A and C on the number line. Okay, so here we have point A and here we have point C and it's really easy to visualize the distance between them. I bet if you asked me to, I could figure that out and say, oh, hey, that's three quarters of a unit or three quarter or three out of four. I could do it easily mathematically, but then look at these answers. Uh, they're not numbers, are they? Take a look at the, these. They are expressions. Now, I have to tell you that most students get fooled by a problem like this. I have a lot of students that are very wise in that they know that if they want to find the distance between two numbers, they should subtract. So their eyes are instantly drawn to A, and a lot of students choose A just right off the bat without noticing something super important. So A is a wrong answer. Let me show you why. And it's actually a little hard to understand on this particular number line I've been given. Because this number line involves both negatives and fractions, you can see this C is somewhere between 0 and negative 1. It's a fraction. Um, or it could be a decimal, I suppose, as well. But it's a piece of or part of a number. It's not a whole number. It makes it a little harder to understand. So in order for you guys to understand it, I'm just going to pretend like my A and my C were on super easy to understand points. Can we pretend like A and C were actually 5 and 7? And I just want to do it real quick to show you my point. If I just took an A that was left of C on the number line, remember when things are left, they're less, and I subtract it, so like 5 minus 7. Notice what would happen with my answer. 5 take away 7, I took away more than I have. I would end up with a negative answer, a negative answer. And notice what this problem was asking me to find. Which expression below represents the distance between those two points on that number line. There's something super important you need to know about distance. Distance is always positive. When we talk about distance, we're going to talk about it as positive. Here's why. I want you to imagine that you ask me, Kate, how far did you walk to the store? I tell you, you know, I walked a half a mile. Now you say, well, then how far did you walk home? Now, I'm going in the opposite direction as I walk home, but would I say I walked to negative a half a mile? I walked to less than a half of a mile? No. Even though my direction changed, I still, the distance that I traveled is still the same. It's still a half a mile of distance, um, whether or not I walked, you know, um, to the store or home from the store. And so we're going to have that same thing here. No matter which direction I'm moving on the number line, my distance should always be positive. And so A minus C wouldn't work. Since I know that A is left of C on this number line, A is less than C. And if I subtract um, a small number minus a larger number, I'm going to end up in the negatives. And so A would be a bad answer. Now you might be thinking, Kate, I know I have to subtract. Now you're, you're right. I, I do have to subtract those two values from each other um, to find the distance. Um, however, I must do something to assure that the answer that I get is positive, and that is taking the absolute value. So if you look at C, what C says here is it still says subtract those two numbers, but then it says whatever answer you get, make it positive. That's what absolute value signs basically mean. Absolute value, absolute value, is defined as a number's distance from zero on the number line. Hear that word distance again? And basically, because it's defined as a distance, absolute value is always positive. It's going to make its answer positive. So whether you got two or negative two, your final step taking the absolute value would be to just make that answer positive. So it would end up being positive two in the end. And that is why C is actually the better answer than A. Whew. I know that's a tricky problem. Um, if you've never heard of absolute value, I suggest you take a look at the intro to integers video that I have um, so you can get familiar with the concept because um, it's a favorite of the GED. All right, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments.